So it is one of Steph and I's last weekends, could be the last weekend to be honest, that is just Steph and I before our baby girl gets here. So one of the things we wanted to do was get out on Lake Travis. So today we rented a pontoon boat. We're gonna spend a few hours out here on the lake. It is a beautiful day. And like I said, this could be one of our last weekends together before she's here. All right, coming at ya. 30, a little over 37 weeks pregnant. Like Nick said, we had to get out on the water because honestly, we're probably not gonna make it back out here this summer. It's just like it's so hot with a newborn, kinda, kinda freaky, but I cannot wait to bring her out here one day. I grew up on boats in Michigan and on lakes, so it's just my happy place and it's just so nice to be in the sun. And so next time we're out here, we'll probably have our daughter. <laughs> Is the perfect time of year to come here. The water is like bath water and I'm getting carried away. <laughs> not too cold, not too hot. This is a true test of upper, upper body. <sighs> and if you're gonna spend some time on the water, you gotta consume some watermelon. Mm. That's juicy watermelon. It's really good watermelon. Lake Travis is an absolutely amazing lake. It's clean, the water is warm, deep. it's deep, and uh, it's really close to us, which is really convenient. Unfortunately, at this location, you uh, you can only get cars, trucks, vehicles to a certain point. So I left Steph down at that point. I'm gonna get the truck, go pick her up. Because the last thing she needs to be doing is putting on a big effort this far along in pregnancy. We are literally, we're less than 20 days away now. So I gotta admit, I am having a lot of fun prioritizing strength training again. And today is one of those days. It is heavy deadlift day. Now, after coming off of some big endurance training and blocks and especially this last marathon prep, my, my strength is not even close to where it was in the past as expected. So I'm looking forward to and like enjoying this journey to building my strength back up again. So today will be a pull focus session pull-ups, a lot of rows being dumbbell rows, barbell rows, um, deadlifts will be the main compound movement of today's workout. I'll hit some biceps. We'll, we'll use a GHG for some back extensions, some kettlebell swings, uh, and just get a bunch of volume in. But the deadlift, that's the priority of today. So we're working up to 405 pounds on the bar. That's what I have on the bar right now. Not really sure what kind of rep ranges I'll be working with um, until I start actually moving the weight. Deadlift has always been one of my favorite movements for a few reasons. One, it is that one compound movement that I feel like I can get pretty strong with. And historically, I've got my deadlift to 700 pounds. It's nowhere close to that right now. Um, second off, Deadlift always feels really good in terms of moving weight, my form, my efficiency with the form, and that's just come with, with repetition. And three, I like the deadlift a lot because it is a very cue heavy, a cue forward movement. So as many times as I've done a deadlift, I'm still thinking of the same cues. And I will give you two cues to focus on that I focus on and I'm focused on today. One, 
Don't allow your hips to shoot up first. This happens all the time with people. It used to happen with me. Your hips shoot up and then you're pulling all of that weight with your upper back and it will just destroy you. And there's a huge risk of injury. The second cue is position yourself over top of the bar in the right way. If you are behind the bar, you will find that you're trying to pull it over your shins and your knees and the bar path is just not straight at all. If you're too far over the bar, you will notice that when you're pulling the weight, you're on your, your tiptoes and you're falling forward and you have no leverage there. So I like to stand in a position and get over top of the bar where I feel I am in my most powerful pulling position. Like if you were just thinking, I need to go pick up this weight off the floor, what is the position you're gonna put your body in that is the most effective and efficient? Apply that to weightlifting and it, it transfers over pretty well. All right, what we're doing next is a superset. This is a row superset with barbell rows and dumbbell rows. What we're gonna do is 10 reps of barbell rows. I have 185 pounds in the bar right now. Then we're gonna move directly into single arm dumbbell rows. 10 reps each arm. I'm gonna grab 120 pound dumbbell that's in front of me right now and then we'll rest 90 seconds in between each superset. So barbell rows first, nice and controlled. Driving with the elbows. Dripping sweat right now. It's about 100 degrees in Texas, which is perfect for a workout. I'm gonna keep moving through the superset, wrap up the workout with some more back and biceps accessory movements. But one of the best parts about living in Texas is when summer hits, workouts just, they slap a little different and I love it. I love dripping in sweat just all over my home gym. Love it. Now before we dive any deeper into this video, I wanna let you know it is sponsored by Helix, who makes premium mattresses customized to fit your unique needs and shipped conveniently right to your door. Here's the thing. We have a Helix mattress on every single bed in our house. And Steph and I, we're having a baby here pretty soon. We know we're not gonna be getting a whole lot of sleep, but we do know that the sleep we're getting is going to be solid because we love our mattress. We personally have a Helix Midnight Lux on every bed in our house. Now when I say Helix makes customized bedding to fit your unique needs, this is what I'm talking about. They offer a quiz on their website. And this quiz is gonna ask you a series of questions. Do you sleep by yourself? Do you sleep with someone else? Are you a side sleeper? Are you a stomach sleeper? Are you a back sleeper? Do you like a firm mattress, medium or soft? And based off a series of questions they ask you, their quiz will recommend a mattress to fit your specific needs. And like I said, we have the Helix Midnight Lux on every bed in our house. And the reason we chose that mattress is because the quiz helped us identify that. Now what's gonna happen after you order your mattress is it's going to ship to your house and if you're in the US, it is free and it's gonna arrive at your doorstep in this little box. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pull this box into the bedroom that the bed's gonna be. You're gonna cut it open, let the mattress open up and expand and before you know it, right before your eyes, you have a full mattress that came in this tiny little box and now fits over your entire bed. So if you are in the market for a new mattress, go to helixsleep.com slash nickbear to get up to $200 off plus two free pillows. And there is a 100 night sleep trial. And after 100 nights, if you don't like your mattress, you can return it. On top of that, there is a 10 year warranty. So go to the link in the description box below, check it out, Helix. Thank you guys, love my mattresses.
So cooking on the green egg has definitely been a learning curve. You know, the Traeger is pretty straightforward. You set the temperature, you walk away, it stays at that temperature. The green egg, you control the temperature, as I've talked about before, with the amount of air that you are kind of letting in or out. And once it heats up, it heats up fast. And you have to watch it because you will, you will burn your food very easy, but uh, that direct flame adds a very nice feature. And Sunday dinner finale, we got the cowboy ribeye, some broccolini, mushrooms, some ciabatta bread that went on the green egg, just toast up a little bit. And then this is an olive oil and herb mixture that we'll dip in. This looks delicious. Now the best part about making a steak that has a bone in it or getting a steak somewhere that has a bone in it is that meat that is right off that bone is the best meat on that steak. And I make sure I get every piece. So right now it is 9.47 p.m. Sunday night, tomorrow morning. To kick off Monday, I'm doing a nice and easy six mile run, taking the dogs for a few laps, part of that run. But the way I wind down every single evening is with Peak Sleep. This is a chocolate flavor. Peak Sleep is Levagen Plus, Magnesium, 5-HTP, and Pico2, which is a mushroom blend. Helps with recovery and sleep deeper, wake up feeling more rested, and this is my favorite way to wind down every night. Take it about 30 to 45 minutes before going to sleep. I mix it in some hot water. It's essentially hot chocolate. Cheers, and we'll see you guys in the morning for a little run. This morning we are kicking off the run with a mile with Remy and a mile with Ryder and I'll finish off the run by myself. But I want to get these guys burnt out a little bit, just a mile each. Get that some exercise. You know, one of the things that I talk a lot about in regards to running is solitude. And solitude is, you know, it's different for everyone. Everyone achieves something unique through solitude. For me, it heightens the awareness of accountability. During these morning runs, there's always a reminder that if there's something that I wanna do, something I wanna achieve, it comes down to me. I am fully 100% accountable. Like I've always said, the sum of your decisions in life amount to where you end up. These morning runs for me, this solitude is a constant reminder that if I wanna build my business to a certain level, if I wanna achieve a fitness goal, if I wanna be a specific standard of father or husband. I can't blame anyone or anything else. I am responsible and accountable for those outcomes and those results. One of the things I do want in life is a big property and I want a two mile running trail on that property. So every morning I can go out with the dogs, with my kids, 
do two, four, six, eight, ten miles in like heavily wooded, big oak tree terrain, some water features. That's my dream. Now that's a beautiful way to kick off a Monday morning. 8.5 miles at a 7.45 minute per mile pace in one hour, five minutes, 49 seconds. Covered in sweat. Saw the sunrise, hit some trails, saw a bunch of deer. That's just like, that's the way to kick off a week, a new week. So one of the big things we are planning for right now with BPN is our 10 year anniversary. It is our birthday this August. Started BPN in my college apartment in 2012 and after nearly a decade, here we are. So August 13th in downtown Austin, we will be having a pop-up shop for you guys to come hang out and visit. Mark it on your calendars. We rented a spot and we're doing our birthday big. We're doing it big. So over the last, six to eight months, we have hired a lot of new people here at BPN. There's a lot of new faces across all departments from customer success to operations, marketing, performance acquisition, uh, brand and creatives, all the way up to our executive level. And with those new hires has brought a new perspective to me as the leader of the organization, the, the founder and CEO, and I have to admit that I am absolutely loving the state of the business right now. And the reason I'm loving the state of the business right now is one, it is challenging me to grow as a founder and CEO. It is challenging me in terms of building and developing teams, uh, providing empowerment and context over control. I recently ended up reading the book, No Rules Rule, uh, it is from the founder and CEO of Netflix, and it's all about building an organization with a strong culture. And with that culture comes the responsibility of hiring talent density. And when you implement talent density into your organization, you hire people that are skilled and experienced and bring this high conversational IQ. You can empower people to take parts of the business and run with it. And you know, bootstrapping a business 10 years ago, you are forced to become this Swiss army pocket knife, which I absolutely loved doing 10 years ago. And if I was still doing that 10 years later, something would be wrong. I, I would have made a mistake somewhere along that, that course and direction where I wasn't growing and developing and building teams. And I, I explain that situation to say that it doesn't matter where you're at on a trajectory towards a goal or an objective. At every stage of that, of that journey, there are challenges that are new, that are going to provide obstacles and resistance. And it is your, it is my responsibility obligation to adapt and grow with those challenges. If I wasn't trying to or forcing myself to grow at the same rate or a faster rate than the scale of the company, I personally would be holding the business back. And I'm really proud of the BPN team, really proud of the team and the people that are here and, and just showing up every day, challenging each other. And what's really cool to see this happen is team members challenging other team members is that it forces us all to grow. You need to be surrounding yourself with people who are challenging you daily. And if you're not doing this, you will not be forced to grow. And when you surround yourself with people who are challenging you, who are forcing you to grow, who are, who are questioning, asking, why did you decide to do that? Why are you choosing A over B? Why are we doing this? It makes you think. And when you have to think deeply about a decision or a choice, 
it makes you really analyze and take inventory and stock of what else could I be doing better. Choosing the hard right over the easy wrong. I love this team. I love you guys. Thank you for supporting this mission, this journey, allowing us to do what we are absolutely so passionate about doing every single day. Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to do this. With that being said, that's the video. We're going to wrap it up here. So thanks, guys.